Hey everybody, Courtney Smith here with our August 23rd edition of Wall Street Winners. Well, let's get right into it, shall we? So that's the most important thing. All right, now let's go to lesser important things. So what we're seeing now is a series of very conflicting indicators. And I'm gonna go through them with you one at a time because some are quite bullish and some are quite bearish. And so in a situation like that, that usually means a choppy market. It means that it'll go up and it'll go down, but we're not gonna see a big trend in either direction until we get more bullish. Some of the bearish things turns bullish and some of the bullish things turn bearish. But these are some pretty big indicators. So let's start here with the S&P. As I told you last week, due to the uh, momentum divergence, we'd see a little dip in the market. We did. And then we closed the week pretty strong. You can see that the purple predictor, which was significantly below the price action, was really quite bullish here. So, OK, mixed bag. Let's go over here. Dow Jones. Well, the little red line shows that selling pressure increased over the buying pressure. Then late in the week, the buying pressure perked up. Selling pressure didn't come down much. Mainly it was buying pressure going back up. So I'd count this one a bit negative. Let's go over to the NASDAQ. Well, the NASDAQ hasn't made a new all-time high until, well, a week, a week and a half ago, something like that. And so it's drifting lower. We don't have to worry about the momentum divergence anymore. We've gotten the prediction that came from that. Uh, that. So all in all, uh, choppy sideways price action here in the NASDAQ. Now, let's stop here for a second. Usually I go pretty quickly because we're in the midst of a neutral period seasonally. And so we expect choppy price action. But the index that we use for determining our seasonality is IWM. Now, IWM represents the Russell 2000, which are the 2000 smallest companies uh, traded on the stock market. And here's why that's important. When you look at the S&P 500, half, half of the earnings come from outside the United States. But the IWM is 90% inside America. Small companies don't trade out, I'm sorry, they don't sell their products outside of America, but the S&P is gigantic multinationals. So you can see that the S&P has made new all-time highs a week ago, but it was back here in June was when the last time the IWM did. And you can see the IWM's at the bottom of the chart of a gigantic rectangle formation. Now, this IWM, in a way, represents the average stock in the stock exchange more than the S&P. The S&P and the NASDAQ are dominated by just 20 companies each. 20 companies have 90% correlation. So it's Apple, Intel, Microsoft, Exxon, you know the names for sure. All right, now down here, clearly we have a bull market in utilities. The seasonality remains bullish, and that's working out great for us. All right. Now, we're using right now the purple line, which says that we should rebound from the little dip. Notice we got the little dip that we were predicting according to the, uh, the stock uh, tr uh, traders almanac.com, highly recommended. Uh, and you can see that it popped up uh, this coming period. Okay, fine. But remember that our secondary is that it goes down. But so far, the purple line has held up beautifully. So right now, our preferred scenario, not preferred because that's what we want, but preferred because that's what looks like the, the truth, is that we'll rebound up a bit in the coming week. Now, over here, we saw asset allocation take a dip but it's really in the context of a gigantic balance between stocks and bonds. So money left the stock market and went over to the bond market. Over here, risk, the market doesn't want risk. 
So what do they want to buy? Well, they want to buy utility stocks, which are less risky than the average stock. They want to buy consumer staples. In other words, they're looking at defensive stocks rather than offensive stocks. That's what the market's looking for. Global shares, ooh, 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 we got up to a new all-time high and then <laughs> crash. Now, we're seeing the yield curve stabilize. I don't think the yield curve is having a big impact on the stock market right now. But nonetheless, stabilization is better than it moving in a flattening way. When it goes down, that's flattening the yield curve. Bonds. I told you bonds le uh, money left the stock market and went into bonds. There's the rally. And I have a big change in my opinion on what I think is going to happen here. We'll tell you. So everything is going down. Everything is going down, which means that our, our key indicators here are all saying that we're going to see lower interest rates. Okay, all of them. CRB, that's this one up here, down a little bit. But gold, clear bear market, 10-year treasury yields in Germany, that's the blue line, clear downtrend. So this is a change in my attitude. I now am bullish on bonds. And bonds are a flight to quality or a flight to safety, just like utes and just like consumer staples. Dollar strong, dollar strong. So, hmm, gold's holding up pretty well. So we're starting to see a little bit of a change here. We can't get bullish on gold by any means, not after the complete hammering we got a couple of weeks ago. And we have yet to surmount any higher high. So the Johnny One notes, the gold bugs, they are wrong as always. And I was wrong too. I thought we'd see a rally. We did not. But I admit my errors, the Johnny One notes, they, their next mistake will be their first mistake. Now, gold key indicators are all bearish here. This one's a bit sideways, but clearly bearish, clearly bearish. So we don't want to be long there. Crude oil broke below that major low. We had a double bottom there, and we broke it. Now we've got this big low down here, a little bit low there. What Now, let's sum it all up. The U.S. economy or the global economy looks in bad shape. We see... Things like copper in a bear market. We see crude oil in a bear market. These are all signs. Uh, why is the market going to utilities and consumer staples and bonds going up, which means yields are going down? Because the market, which is a real-time indicator of the economy, is saying that the global economy, particularly the United States, and also, by the way, particularly China, are both weakening. And since China and the United States are the drivers of global economic growth, the demand for uh, raw materials, the demand for stocks is starting to crack here. So this is what I'm saying. Technically, we're, we're, we're you know, a peanut away from a new all-time high on the S&P 500. But there's other, and the seasonality is bullish. But at the same time, we're seeing things like this, which is, Really, things like crude oil and copper are leading indicators of the stock market. Okay, Bitcoin. We got bullish a couple weeks ago. That's turned out to be beautiful. So we want to continue to remain on the long side of Bitcoin. We're breaking to new highs here. Probably want to keep a tight stop on it. Volume, as you can see down here, is very low. Uh, what we're looking at here is, uh, uh, is a nice little bull market here. Should chuck, should keep chugging higher here. There's no reason for it not to. Okay, freebies, love having you here. Be careful with your trading here. We need to be hunkering down rather than getting aggressive at these points. Now, if you're interested in knowing how we come to a lot of this, go to sss2021.com, that's Stock Success School, and you can learn all about the techniques that we use at sss2021.com.